Hi there, it's Łukasz for the Tech Travel Geeks. We've recently shared the unboxing video for the Poco M4 Pro 5G by Xiaomi, and today we're following it up with the setup video, showing the phone's installation process and some initial thoughts about the software experience. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to our channel to see more videos from us. For the setup, I'll be using my Lebara SIM card for now, plus a smaller 16GB microSD card that I had lying around just to check it out. If you're following along, you'll also need your Google credentials and your Wi-Fi password handy. You also get the SIM ejector tool in the box, so you should be all good for now. But the SIM tray is on the left hand side of the phone, so let's get it out. There's space for either a nano SIM card and a micro SD card or two SIM cards instead. I'll just go with one for now. I'd say the easiest way to do it is to have the tray with the SD card slot on the left with the cuts and the metal bits on the top. Put the SD card facing up and make sure the text isn't upside down. The card will fit in nicely. For the SIM card, it's the same thing. The text should be readable and the cut should be at the top left corner. It will fit just fine. Now, just keep the text at the top and the phone of the screen upwards and just slide it in. We can now switch the phone on and start the actual setup, yay! We get the usual POCO logo and powered by Android. In this case it's Android 11 and specifically it's Xiaomi's flavor, MIUI 12.5. I'm really happy to see that the phone got updated to MIUI 12.5 which brings additional features like better performance and memory management, live wallpapers and many more. First, let's choose the language. I was a bit surprised that English US was pre-selected, but I couldn't see the United Kingdom nearby. After a bit of scrolling, I ended up noticing that English United Kingdom was actually at the very top of the list. Oh well, good to know. The region was luckily pre-selected, so no problem there. There's quite a bit of terms and conditions, but I just trusted Xiaomi, having used their devices a lot in the past. Next, you should connect to Wi-Fi if it's available, so let's do that now. The phone then gives you an option to copy apps and data from your Google account or another phone, but I always like to start from scratch, not to copy anything unnecessary each time, so let's go with that option. Next thing is to log into your Google account, which will give you access to your email, Google Play Store, etc. So let's do this now. If you have two-factor authentication enabled on your account, and you definitely should have it, You'll get a notification on your old phone or via email, so make sure to confirm it's you. You'll then have to wait for a bit, in my case it was just under 2 minutes, to get everything set up with your account. Next, some Google account settings. Backup to drive, use of phone's location, Wi-Fi scanning, usage and diagnostics, which I disabled, and automatic app updates. At this stage you can skip the rest of the update, or just continue. So let's do that. There's some Google Assistant setup, but since I've already registered my voice in the past, I don't have to repeat the usual phrase, nice and easy. And here you can make some additional changes. Add another email account, for example if you have a work one, change the font size for usability, change the wallpaper, or review additional apps. I just went with the coastal view for the wallpaper. It looks quite nice. In the additional apps, it's just Google Pay, so not much to do here. Now the security, where you can either go with just screen lock or fingerprint. But first, pick either a pin, a pattern or a password. I went with a pattern. The fingerprint scanner is mounted on the side of the device, on the power button, and it works great on Xiaomi devices, so I hope it's good here as well. It's always useful to scan all the different sides of your thumb, so that it will recognize it better. The process took only 20 seconds, which is really quick. Finally, there's some MIUI settings. Use of location, showing diagnostic data with Xiaomi, automatic system updates, personalized ads, and joining the user experience program. And that's it, we're done. We now just have to wait a moment. In my case, it was around 90 seconds. Not too bad. 
And straight away, we get a software update notification, which adds a November security update to the phone and some other improvements. Let's download the update and restart when it's done. The phone comes with October updates straight out of the gate. There's also over 23GB of storage used already, but still 100GB free. If you missed the unboxing, the phone comes with 6GB of RAM, but there's also a 4GB version available. It runs on the MediaTek Dimensity 810 5G chipset, which is an improvement over the recent Poco M3 Pro 5G. Let's go into settings and switch to dark mode. While this is not an OLED screen, I got so used to dark mode that I prefer it even on LCD screens. We can also change the refresh rate from the default 60Hz to 90Hz, which would make things a bit smoother, but at the cost of battery life. Luckily, the phone comes with a large 5000mAh battery, so it shouldn't be much of a problem. You can also control the screen's color reproduction by choosing either vivid, saturated or standard colors. I went with vivid. You can even adjust the color temperature as with other MIUI phones we've seen. I also went on and changed the navigation as I got used to it on the Pixel 6 Pro recently. Just search for buttons in the settings and switch from buttons to full screen gestures. Much better. The phone's still updating, so let's look around a bit. Let's look at the apps we have pre-installed on the phone. Poco devices usually come with a lot of apps out of the box, so be prepared for that. Since the Poco launcher comes with different categories in the app drawer, let's check them out. For communication, in addition to some usual ones, we have Facebook and LinkedIn, as well as the Poco community app, which allows you to connect with other Poco users. In entertainment, you get some Google and Xiaomi apps, as well as Amazon Music, Netflix and TikTok, as well as Dust Settle, which should be in the games menu, but hey ho. Nothing special in photography, just the usual. The tool folder, however, is actually quite massive. Many of those are usual Google and Xiaomi tools you would expect, but Poco also added the Opera browser in addition to Chrome and WPS Office which is a free office suite. I personally prefer Google Docs myself, but it's up to you, you can always uninstall it. In the news and reading section, we just get Google News, but there's plenty of third-party apps in shopping. AliExpress, Amazon, eBay, and the Poco Store. Similarly, there's a lot of random games installed. Clones of Tetris, Basta Move, Bejeweled, and some Tiles game. Plus the shooter we mentioned earlier, And there's two more games not listed here. State of Survival, which is like a zombie tower defense town building game. And PUBG, which you have to download first, as it's not fully pre-installed. Before we go, let's check the photo app and take some photos of the Mi Explorer toy. It's the usual app we've seen in other phones. We can take normal photos, Portrait one. You can also switch to the ultra wide camera as well as the video camera, which has quite a large crop by the looks of it. It zooms in quite a lot. We'll also check the video performance later on, but there's unfortunately no 4K video by the looks of it due to the lack of 4K support from the Dimensity 810 5G chipset. There's also a pro mode, which allows you to adjust all the settings of the camera. And that's also where you can enable 50 megapixel photos. You can also edit the photos and add some adjustments, but unfortunately there's no sky replacement option, which we've seen on other Xiaomi phones. And when I tried the adjustment button, the app got stuck, but I think that's because the system was still updating, which adds a lot of strain to the system. We'll share more photos in the future, but here's a couple from a nearby lake I took just a moment ago. The selfie camera takes 16 megapixel photos, and again, 
we'll have to check it further in our future videos. Overall, I'm looking forward to exploring the Poco M4 Pro 5G further. It looks like a great and reasonably priced phone. We'll have some more content about the M4 Pro 5G in the near future, so if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to us and let us know in the comments below if there's anything you'd like us to focus on in the future. But for now, thanks for watching!